Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I will be working on a two-page spread and I am going to introduce to you my new collection with Stamperia which is called Welcome Home. I did film a live video with my Stamperia friends while I was in Budapest where I introduced the new collection that was broadcasted in the Facebook of Stamperia. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to really quickly go through what is included so you can get an idea and then we'll start playing on the journal. So this is a full scrapbooking collection where you will find the 12 by 12 pad the collection is called Welcome Home and it is available right now by the way. You can see some of the pages here really quickly. I designed that having card making and art journaling in mind. So you will find lots of elements to fuzzy cut and use as your focal points. But at the same time these are great for albums and lots and lots of other scrapbooking projects. Then you will find the same pad in the 8x8 size. And of course, when it comes to papers, my most favorite, the collectibles, where you will find tons of images to fuzzy cut. This is perfect for our journaling, and I will be playing with this a lot while I will be sharing many projects in the future. You will find in here my favorite cups, pots, flowers, animals, doors, windows, tons of stuff to play with. Then you will find four different designs of rice papers and again I'm going through the collection really quickly just so you can get an idea but you will find the links down below if you want to go ahead and check it out on your own pace. So here are some of my stencils. These are my absolute favorites, the borders as well as the circles and then some extra stencils that are great to give you background patterns. These are the botanical ones, you can see flowers, borders, even a wood grain border. Here is a lovely detailed foliage one, absolute favorite, as well as bricks and stones. Then you will find three different designs of rabbons, coordinating perfectly with the colors of the collection. And for those who love to add more uh, dimension, there are the wooden shapes, these are really thick. And uh, they are great if you would like to create tags, this is where I tend to use them. Also in the dimensional elements category, there are the decorative chips, these are laser cuts, and they are great to add that extra something. I will be using those on tags and I do have many examples filmed that you will see in the coming weeks. So these are the die cuts. The die cuts are images from the collection that are chipboard, so this is quite thick. And these are the ephemera, which is cardstock. These are also stickers, if you like, you can peel them off. Two different packs, you will find different designs on each and every one of them. And of course I couldn't have a collection without stamps. So here is a stamp with my favorite teacups, a border of cups, a teapot. Here is a stamp set great for backgrounds and art journaling and another one with loads of lovely elements. And I'm in love with the window, the fence and the birdhouse from this stamp set. Then also in this collection we introduced with Stamperia the blending brushes as well as the blending sponges which are great to play with the dye inks. Plus we have six new colors of dye inks in this collection. Another fun element that I have in my collection and I'm really excited with are the molds. So I will be playing this year with lots of molds to create dimensional projects. And uh, you can see here I have some clocks, lovely clocks with many details. These I call the medallions and you will find a cat, a hot air balloon. These are the leaves and flowers and butterflies that you can use again and again. Here's another adorable one and I absolutely love the hot air balloon and a teacup set. So wait for uh, videos using all those with lots of ideas on what you can do with them. And now that you have an idea of what is included in my new collection, let's start playing. So I'm working on my mixed media journal and I will be using the blending brushes to create my background. This is my A5 journal with the mixed media paper, not the stone paper, and I haven't prepped the pages at all, so I'm working directly on the paper. I'm using one of the colors from the previous dye ink pad collection, and this is cerulean blue. I'm just using my blending brush to apply it, making sure that I have lighter and darker areas, and I don't want to oversaturate the color, as I like the background to be light and pale. 
So here I'm using the turquoise, and which is one of the new colors that we have just introduced. When you use these brushes, you definitely get a lighter effect, a paler effect of the ink pad. But if you like, you can go ahead over it again and again to saturate the ink. Or you can definitely use a blending tool, which is going to transfer way more ink on your page. But at the same time, it makes it quite difficult to cover up such a big area and at the same time to get a good blending. Before I go ahead and do the same thing on the other page, I'm going to show you the next step. Here I'm using one of my new stencils. This is a leaf stencil and I'm going to go over it again using the same colors kind of creating a border, so I'm only going to use this color at the top by using the same color that I have underneath, so I'm doing a tone-on-tone -tone, uh, technique here and then for the bottom I'm going to use my turquoise again for a tone-on-tone -tone technique for this step there are many things that you can do, you can use any type of paste that you like over the stencil to add some dimension and texture at the background you can definitely use uh, water if you like to lift some color. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just splattering some water all over the pages. You see that I repeated the same technique on the other page. And uh, after applying the water, I'm going to blot it. And you will see that it's going to lift some color and I will get a lovely effect. The more it dries, the more it's going to be visible. And of course, it really depends how visible it is on the surface. If you work on a primed surface, for example, you will see those platters even more. For my next step, I'm going to use a brayer with a ivory color, just of white. And uh, I'm working on a jelly plate and that just uh, works as a palette for me. You don't really need to have a jelly plate for this step. So I'm going to load my um, brayer with this color and I will go over the page, creating some kind of an interest there, some lighter areas, some lines. Just trying to uh, make it organic. I'm not going for a perfection here. You can see that it is quite random. However, I'm not doing any diagonal lines, only vertical and uh, horizontal. Don't ask me why, I just like that look. You can repeat the step as many times as you like and you can even introduce extra colors if you like. It's a great technique and it gives you lots of visual texture every time. So I'm going to do one more time in some areas. And then I will proceed and do my stamping. For that, I'm using my clocks new stamp. Absolutely love the row of clocks in this one. But for this uh, page, I'm going to go with the text. I'm going to stamp that uh, again, going for a tone on tone look using only the dye ink pads that I have used in the previous step. For today's project, what I had in mind was to have a very light background and that's why I'm going with tone-on-tone -tone techniques all over the place. And let's play with one more stencil. This is my new border stencil. You will find loads and loads of borders to play with. Even the outside edge is a border and I'm going to show you an example of how that looks on a page that I have already made. Here's another example. Really fun to play with. And by the way, you just saw some of the projects that I have been creating while playing with my prototypes. I will be sharing those pages with you in the upcoming weeks, hopefully to get you inspired. So here I picked one of the very delicate borders. Uh, I'm going over it with my volume paste to uh, introduce a little bit of texture. But again, I'm making sure that my border, as well as the rest of the background, is not busy at all. That's why I went with one of those borders and white on top of those light colors. Now, if you feel uncomfortable applying the paste over this uh, stencil, since you have so many designs there, just use some masking tape to mask off any any other areas to avoid the mess. I just wanted to make sure that from one stencil you get many borders and this way you get a great value for money. Now I left the background on the side and let's play with the ephemeras. There are two packs of ephemera in this collection. In one of them you will find images like windows, doors, 
a gorgeous bike which is already cut out for you, a fence, you'll find lots of flowers, birds, a birdhouse, even chairs and tables to create your very own scenes. From this ephemera pack today I will be using some of the flowers that are included but you can play with other elements that you can see here as well like the birds for example would fit to today's project. Now what I like to do is to empty them in a box so that I can easily browse through them and pick up the images that I like to play with. Now let's take a look at the other ephemera pack. This is the one that is going to give you lots of houses many cups and pots that you can place the houses inside, lots of flowers. Now for my project today I'm going to go with many of the flowers and the vases. So there are three vases in this ephemera pack, but I'm going to bring in the collectibles for you so you can see that you can find the same images, maybe in different sizes, all the collectibles as well. So there are many options for you. For this project I'm going to use the three vases from the ephemeras and I'm going to cut out the two vases from the collectible pad. So here are the two vases. I am going to chop off the lavender from one of uh, the vases since I don't want to bother trying to cut out all that detail. And now it's just a matter of placing all those elements on top of my pages. So I'm going to play around, decide on their placement. And once I'm happy, I'm going to stick them down. Now these are uh, stickers. So if you like, uh, at least the ephemera ones. So if you like, you can definitely peel them off and stick them down. However, this is not what I'm going to do. Because otherwise I will not be able to lift a little bit the edges and tuck underneath other things. So I'm not going to peel them off. When I'm ready, I can only stick them down with a little bit of glue only at the center of the bag. But it really depends on you. Now I'm going to embellish everything with my flowers. I am going to have flowers outside of the vases or the jars as well as flowers inside. So for the first vase, I'm going to use my uh, craft knife. I'm going to cut out a slit. And this way I can uh, stick inside the lavender. I'm just going to chop off a little bit from the bottom. I don't need all of it. And now it's ready to stick it down. So that is what I was saying before. I'm not going to peel them off. I'm just adding glue only at the back and at the center of the images. So if I decide to tuck uh, something underneath, I am able to do it later on. And you will see that it is going to come in handy. So now I'm going to play with the leaves and the flowers and embellish everything. And again, for this step, you can either use flowers and leaves from the ephemeras. There is a big variety to choose from. Or you can definitely fuzzy cut from the pad or from the collectibles pad. Now this step may seem quick and simple to do as you just pick up flowers and embellishing uh, your uh, project. However, this can take me forever, especially if I try to overthink where everything is going to go. Trying to keep a balance between the leaves and the flowers, making sure that no identical flowers are next to each other. Try to play with the different colors that are there, the different sizes. But I find this process so relaxing and I really enjoy it. Now with the collectibles you will also find many labels. I'm just going to cut out two of them. You will find that on one side they say lavender. On the other side they are empty. So you can use whichever side you like. So for my lavender vase I just went with this tag. I'm going to stick it down and then I have another one, the rounded one, which I'm going to use from the empty side. And for that I decided to cut it in half just to give it more interest. I didn't have I didn't want to have all the labels just at the middle, at the center. And I continue to add elements to decorate my project with leaves, flowers, there are some branches. Now, if you like, you can add some butterflies. There are many options of butterflies. I'm going to use those three ones from the ephemeras in different colors, different sizes. If you like, you can definitely use butterflies from the rabbons. This is going to give you even more options. Lovely butterflies in beautiful colors. And you can definitely use the birds if you like. 
Now you know that I always like to have a quote, for that I'm using one from the collectibles pad that says choose to be happy. I'm going to cut it out and stick it down. Again, you can see how nice it fits where I want it to go since I didn't add glue all the way to the edges of the rest of the elements. So I can always tuck underneath and create clusters if I choose so in a later time. Now here I feel like I have some empty space, so I'm uh, uh, working with my collectibles again. I decided to use one of the branches, but I feel like the bird is quite big, so I'm just uh, going to cut out only the branch, stick it down, and then I can uh, play with another bird. There are uh, plenty of options in the collectibles pad, so I went ahead and cut out a smaller one. And what is great about the collectibles is that they are front and back. So when you cut it out, you have both options. You can have your bird looking towards the center or flip it and have your bird looking towards the outside. That is something that I absolutely love about the collectibles and I have an idea on how to use those front and back um, uh, elements since uh, you can definitely create um, window cards with elements that when you open the window you can see the back and it's not going to be ugly. Anyway, this is another video for the future. And at this stage I'm super happy with how my page came together. All I'm doing is adding the finishing touches. So here is my uh, jelly roll. I'm adding some highlights just like always, white doodling here and there. You can also use a thin black marker to add antennas for your butterflies or even add doodling on some of the cutouts if you like. And then finally, just like always, some white splatters. Now here is a finishing touch. I decided to uh, oversaturate the bottom of my composition just to give it kind of a ground. I didn't want to go with brown, however. I wanted to still keep that light and airy effect that I got. So here again I'm using my turquoise color which I have underneath with a very stiff brush. This is one of the shadow brushes by Stamperia. And I'm just adding and oversaturating the color just there. The brush gives me a kind of control of where exactly I want that shadow to go and I'm super happy with the result. So here are some close-up photos on the project that I made for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Just like always, links to everything I used can be found down below. Thank you all for joining me and I hope you all have a lovely day.